Hello everyone, so let us begin our new chapter chemical equilibrium. This is the first part of the chapter. Here we shall be dealing with the basics and most importantly the KC for the reaction. First of all I will be teaching you four important basics which should be known to you as these are very uh, much helpful in the future chemical equilibrium concepts also. So first of all the most important point which you should know is that chemical equilibrium can be obtained from both sides of the reaction. Now from mathematical point of view if we say that if A is equal to B then obviously B has to be equal to A. Similar things can also be said for many multiple things like A is equal to B is equal to C. Similarly B is equal to A is equal to C. So whenever three things or many things are in equilibrium then they should be obtained from any side of the equilibrium. Similar thing has been shown here. We have SO3 which goes into SO2 plus O2. So the equilibrium is written in this direction. Similarly, we go on to the reverse direction that is this goes into SO3 then also the arrow has to remain the same and these two have to be in equilibrium. The second point which is very important is that the chemical equilibrium is dynamic in nature. Now try to understand the difference between dynamic and static. So first of all I take the example in the dynamic as we have a train which is moving on the tracks okay it moves with a constant velocity v so the acceleration is equal to zero so we can see that this train would be moving smoothly at any point of time that we see so this type of equilibrium is known as a dynamic equilibrium that is it takes place but it does not disturb anything that is it remains constant the rate is constant basically similarly if we take velocity uh, the static equilibrium static equilibrium implies like we have any container we just place something here and it remains forever there. So that is static. Static implies there is no movement. But dynamic implies that there is a movement but the rate remains constant. Okay, so what we can say is that chemical equilibrium is dynamic in nature. Okay, so this point should be understood. I've told you what is dynamic. It moves on with a fixed uh, rate in both the directions. Both the directions is clear from here. The meaning of dynamics is clear from here. The third point is that we know there are many measurable quantities. Now what is meant by measurable quantities? The quantity which you can measure with the help of a particular unit. Let me say we have temperature, we have viscosity, or let me say we have the coefficient of uh, refraction, coefficient of anything which is present, the refractive index, okay, or whatever that is there. So what I mean to say here is that you have understood the meaning of measurable quantities, that whenever we have a chemical equilibrium, the measurable quantities like temperature, viscosity, refractive index, concentration, whatever remains constant, okay, and they do not change with time. Okay, so this thing should be understood. It doesn't change with time. Whatever the quantities which you can measure, they remain constant and they do not change with time. Now the fourth point is the most important point which should be understood. First of all, you should understand the meaning of catalyst. You know what is a catalyst? Catalyst is a substance which accelerates the rate of the reaction. Okay, so what actually happens whenever we add the catalyst, it accelerates the rate of equilibrium. What does it mean? It means that the equilibrium is achieved faster. That is why only the catalyst is added. We want the equilibrium to achieve faster, but it should also know that it doesn't affect the equilibrium state. Okay, kindly understand the difference. Let me make a graph for you so that the difference is quite. Now kindly understand this graph very well because if you've understood this, the basics are quite clear to you. Okay, so let me begin with the graph. First of all, try to focus on the concentration which is written on the y-axis. This point I'll discuss later on. The concentration is written on the y-axis. The time is written on the x-axis. So first of all, I've taken the blue line. I've taken the red line which is shown here. So what actually happens is you can see that if reactant is decreasing, the product would increase. Why that would happen? It is quite clear from here. If the reactant is decreasing, it would go on to the product side. Okay, so that is quite evident. So what actually happens without catalyst? The without catalyst graph is shown with the help of the red pen. That is this. 
this graph this graph and which moves along here finally constant has been shown here with the help of the red pen that is without catalyst the equilibrium is achieved at t is equal to 40 minutes at this point okay now what i do is that i add a catalyst here and when the catalyst is added we take this blue pen graph as the final answer now what you can see from here after the catalyst is added the graph moves along from here to here at this point that is the reactant part similarly the product part moves from here to here at this point and meets here so what you can see the equilibrium would be achieved at this state that is at t is equal to 30 minutes so you can see that without catalyst we get the equilibrium at t is equal to 40 minutes for example but with the help of the catalyst we get the equilibrium at t is equal to 30 minutes let me say okay so what you can see from here with the help of a catalyst we can accelerate the rate of equilibrium which is shown here by the help by the amount of 10 minutes for this example but the takeaway point from here is that the equilibrium is achieved at this point the equilibrium is achieved at this point if you join these two with the help of a straight line and take that onto the y-axis that is the concentration the concentration point would come out to be the same so what you can see from here it doesn't change the equilibrium state you can see at equilibrium the reactant has to be equal to the products let me say that is equal to 0.5 molars you can see both of these points have to be the same the y coordinate is the same let me say this is some 30 comma 3 for example so similarly this has to be like 40 comma 3 so you can see that the y coordinate remains same no matter whatever time it takes with the help of the catalyst okay so basically adding a catalyst doesn't change the equilibrium state so this was the fourth and the most important point now we have discussed about the basics now let us focus on the kc now let us understand the law of mass action first of all the statement for it is that the rate of an elementary reaction is directly proportional to the product of the active masses of the reactants raised to the power equal to the stoichiometric coefficients in a balanced chemical equation. Now let us try to see that what does it actually mean mathematically. Now try to see whenever we take the rate for the forward reaction. Now what does it mean rate for the forward reaction implies that how would we get these products basically so how these products are pro produced these products are produced whenever the reactants uh, dissociate or basically they disintegrate in order to give the products okay so that is quite evident that in order to get the forward reaction we need to disintegrate these things so what does the law of mass action states it states that the active masses of the reactants raised to the power first of all directly proportional directly proportional product of the active masses now active mass of a is written here into active mass of b is written here okay we have written that raised to the power equal to the stoichiometric coefficient what is the stoichiometric coefficient for a that is equal to m1 what is the stoichiometric coefficient for b that is equal to m2 now you would get confused that what actually is active mass so in order to simplify these things there is a particular denotion so what we do is that in a solution phase whenever the reaction is held in a solution phase what is actually done a a that is active mass of a is directly proportional to molarity okay and also we know that a of a that is active mass of a can also be written to be directly proportional to the mole fraction so that is how we simplify it so mathematically it can be written as a a that is active mass of a is equal to some coefficient now since this is removed there should be a constant should be multiplied so that is a constant that is equal to gamma this is equal to gamma into molarity of a okay now similarly if we do the same thing for here we get a that is equal to now some uh, constant has to be added that is equal to let me say some r this is r this is gamma into the mole fraction of a that is represented as x of a now how to remove these constants in order to remove these constants what we do is that we take dilute solutions now whenever we take the dilute solutions what actually happens is the value of gamma and the value of r is equal to 1 okay please understand this concept very well this is very important for j advanced so we have taken molarity 
and mole fractions we have taken the constants now we want to remove the constants and in order to remove them we take the dilute solutions where gamma comma r is equal to 1 so what we can write finally from here we can write finally from here that activity of a active mass of a basically can be replaced by molarity and it can also be replaced by the mole fraction okay this is the mole fraction okay so this should be understood i have derived it for you P many people ignore it but advanced ask question on it so please understand it very well now let us try to derive the value of k now this is once again the equation given to us we apply the law of ma mass action please don't cram the things please understand them very well otherwise they won't stick for long so in order to derive the forward rate of reaction what is actually disintegrating the initial that is the products are disintegrating in order to get the uh, the reactants are in, uh, disintegrating in order to get the products okay so rate of forward reaction would be proportional to the active mass of a raised to power m1 into active mass of b raised to power m2 as i had written here okay now similar thing let us write for the backward reaction uh, so rate of backward reaction would be directly proportional when when we would be getting disintegration of this thing in order to get the reactants so here we would get active mass of c raised to power n1 into active mass of d raised to power n2 now let us try to remove the constants from here the constants are removed from here so we get rf is equal to kf now kf is what kf is the rate constant of forward reaction okay this should also be kept in mind into activity of a now activity of a can be written as the molarity of a or basically the concentration of a raised to power n1 into b concentration raised to power n2 okay so this is let me say equation number one for you now doing the similar thing for here we get rb is equal to kb now this thing is written as what this thing is written as c raised to power n1 into d raised to power n2 similar thing which we have done here so let me say that this is the equation number two where we have the kb as the rate constant for the backward reaction so we have derived these things here i hope that this is quite understood if it is not understood please ask me in the comment section now at equilibrium now comes the main play which we want so at equilibrium what would happen the rates of both the sides have to be equal so what does it mean it means that rf has to be equal to rb because the rate of the forward reaction should be equal to the rate of the backward reaction then only the reaction would be at equilibrium so from here we get kf is into a raised to power m1 into b raised to power m2 to be equal to kb into c raised to power n1 into d raised to power n2 okay so from here we define the value of kc i'll name it later that is mathematically defined as kf upon kb so kf take kb onto the other side and these two things onto the other side we get the value of this thing to be equal to c raised to power n1 into d raised to power n2 whole upon a raised to power m1 into b raised to power m2 now what is the meaning of c c is defined as the equilibrium constant so this is how the value of equilibrium constant is derived for any reaction which we have m1a plus m2b goes into uh, n1c plus n2d and this is the equilibrium constant for it that is product upon reactants basically okay so this relation should also be remembered see to be honest many times question have been asked in my coaching institute on the basis of these two things only so they have directly asked from here in order to find out this thing okay that is the rate constant of the forward reaction so if you don't know this derivation then you obviously are stuck you cannot expect the questions in advance to be directly based onto this thing that should be clear to you so please understand this derivation very well what i have done for you here if there are any doubts kindly ask me in the comment section please check out my organic chemistry courses and mathematics courses on unacademy they are completely free many people are getting benefited from it and thank you and all the best